That is what they don't want you to see. Once you see this owl here and compare it to the other one on the left hand side of it, it becomes very obvious that this is an owl. You can now begin to, to distinguish beyond all that busy signals and such that they don't want you to look through, yet they place there in honor of the totem bird, the Owl of Wisdom, which is um, the totem bird because their god, Lucifer, was supposed to have been the wisest of all of God's creation. Wisdom of Lucifer, wisdom into the bird, wisdom into the word Illuminati, therefore, you know, the chain of wisdom is followed all the way through. All right, now, did they teach you this in the Illuminati? Yes. Now, when you take a look at it very carefully, you will notice that it is two equilateral triangles that are interwoven. This shows the union of God with man. However, when you look at the next one, it's similar to it. It's known as a hexagon. This is when you take two equilateral triangles, place one on top of another. Symbolically speaking, you're placing man above God. Now, this next symbol is the foulest, the most evil of all symbols in the occult world. There is nothing that can even come close. It is known as the hexagram. It is the six-pointed star with a circle surrounding it. It is this symbol that must be used during high ceremonial magic or high ceremonial witchcraft when you are summoning up demons to this plane of existence. The use of the hexagram is said by Doc to be very symbolic and seems to represent the occult concept of a Christ figure just as the Maitreya was for Nicholas Rorick and Henry Wallace. But what Christ do they mean? Doc believes the pattern of hexagrams in the design of the dollar bill provides the clue. If we take a look at the 13 stars directly above the head of the eagle and connect the dots, you will see where the very first hexagram is located. And if you notice that surrounding the hexagram is the 28 guidelines that make a circle. Now, inside every single point, the six points, is a star. There are six of them. They surround now the seven stars. Remember, six is the number of man, seven is the number of a god. Now, it is man that is surrounding God or is placed above God. If what Doc is saying is true, this could represent the person the Bible calls the man of sin, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshiped. Doc's interpretation seems to also fit the worship of Lucifer, for in the Bible, Lucifer declares that he will exalt his throne above the stars of God. Next, Doc claims a second hexagram can be found by connecting the various points where the much talked about number 13 is represented. And don't try to tell me it's the 13 colonies. There are 13 stars above the eagle's head, 13 stripes in the shield, 13 leaves on the olive branch, 13 arrows in the eagle's talon, and then 13 letters in the phrase E Pluribus Unum, which makes for two points on either side of the eagle's head, for the six points total of the hexagram. If we take a close look at the same seal and connect all the 13 together, just like we did when we were kids, when we were playing that game, connect the dots, once we connect all the 13s, it becomes very apparent where the second hexagram can be found. In this one, which is very obvious, already comes with a circle around it. So this is the second hexagram here in figure two. 
Yes. And then where's the third hexagram? The third hexagram can be found on the other part of the great seal. Again, connect all the 13 together, the 13 um, letters, the 13 um, steps in the pyramid, connect all this together. And you'll know with the circle that's already there, it forms the third hexagram. In other words, a six, a six, and a six. A six, six, six. Doc has deciphered a code that, if there, would glorify Lucifer's Messiah, whom the Bible calls the Beast or Antichrist. In the book of Revelation, it reads, Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Could there really be three six-pointed hexagrams on the dollar bill? Once we start at the base of the pyramid, which is the foundation of all things, and follow the design of the hexagram itself, you're gonna find out something very startling. We go from the M and follow the symbol all the way up to the A. The A cuts directly underneath the eye of Lucifer all the way to the S. The S connects all the way down. It goes in between the V and the I and connects all the way to the O. And following the symbol, the O connects up and over along the symbol of the hexagram to the word N. In perfect sequence, it's M-A-S-O-N, Mason. It's not what a lot of other people have espoused that the symbol connects down to the M in Seclorum and that the word is an anagram or something like that. Those people who are doing that obviously don't know what they're talking about or they don't know how to plagiarize me correctly because the order of the Illuminati have stated and always will state, this is perfectly spelled out to be M-A-S-O-N, Mason. This points conclusively that the Masons have been involved in the order of the Illuminati. This was back during the Council of Willemsbad, which would have been July 16, 1782. All right, so what are we seeing? Now, if we look at the bottom one of the reverse side of the dollar bill, you'll see on the right-hand side that, again, there's a lot of busy intersecting diagonal lines. Yet, if we apply the same principle we just used to reveal the, the hidden owls of the Illuminati and apply it, we will find that there is now a skull-faced winged demon. And it is very obvious, once you take away the background, the busy noise, it becomes very apparent what it is and that it's been there all along. And if we just simply go and enlarge the, that section, just start with a small one and just keep enlarging it, and enlarge it even more, even with the background noise there, as I call it, I think it becomes very apparent what we are now looking at, that it is still a skull-faced winged demon. And it is these demons that are protecting and blessing the two great seals of the Order of the Illuminati. And it would make perfect sense that it had to be demons used to protect these seals since I am convinced it was those same demons that handed them over to Thomas Jefferson when they first created them. I am convinced beyond all doubt that that indeed was a demon sent up from the bowels of hell 
probably under the direct orders of Lucifer himself. Doc Marquis makes it clear that he is no longer involved in the occult and that since becoming a Christian, he has dedicated himself to warning others about the activities of the secret societies that worship Lucifer. I've been doing this now since the late 70s when I first left the Order of the Illuminati and that's when I'm, um, at that point I had become a born-again Christian. At that time, I realized what I had um, been doing all along. Maybe in my own way of trying to make up for what I had done, and I've done a lot of heinous things in this life, I begin to wonder if I'm not trying to make up or atone for some of those things I had done. And I know in my heart of hearts that as a born again child of the king, my sins have already been bought and paid for. But still, there's just that part of me that still feels so guilty about everything I've done. So it could be in my own way, and I'm, I'm somewhat convinced that in my own way, I'm still trying to make up for all those crimes I was guilty of when I was in the Illuminati. Doc makes it clear that he believes demonic forces were behind the design of the dollar bill and are working through secret societies. One of them is the Order of the Eastern Star, the female chapter of Freemasonry, whose icon is an inverted pentagram, a symbol associated with the satanic goat of Mendes. Ed Decker told us a story about a woman he once counseled who was involved in this society. I got a call one day after I had published a book on it and. Uh, a little book called The Question of Freemasonry. And in that book, I had, on one page, is the actual Goat of Mendes. The Goat of Mendes is a very significant symbol since it was designed by 19th century French magician, Eliphas Levi, without question, the most influential occultist of the last 200 years. In his books, Levi glorified Lucifer and Satan, and his writings were quoted extensively by every major occult leader, including Albert Pike, Madam H.P. Blavatsky, and Manly P. Hall. Now listen carefully to Ed Decker's story. I got a call from some place back in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and this is years ago, and a lady called me up and she said, I want to talk to you. She said, I received a copy of your book. I, I am a, uh, the, the head of the Eastern Star for my state. And she said, every time I go to uh, another area of the state to, to uh, do the induction of the leadership of the local chapters of the Eastern Star, I have these bad dreams. And it's like this demon comes in and attacks me in my bedroom. And it says, evil, evil thing. And it's beginning to bother me. And someone mentioned to me that, you know, the Masons and the, and the stuff that they do isn't really godly. You might want to study it a little bit. She said, so she told me that she went to a Christian bookstore and asked them if they had anything on the Eastern Star or Freemasonry. And the lady said, you know, I, in the mail, I had just gotten this booklet. It's called The Question of Freemasonry by this guy, Ed Decker. And she said, I opened the book. I opened it up to the page. It just opened to the page that you have the Goat of Mindy's on there. And I looked at that, and that's the demon that's been coming into my room and attacking me when I'm around, going around the state and doing the, the inductions of the Ladies of the Eastern Star. She said, I ran down three blocks to my husband's office, left my car right in the parking lot of the Christian bookstore, ran down there, got my husband out of his, I think he was an insurance agent or something, and said, look at this. They left there, went home, read the book, got on their knees, confessed it as sin, renounced it, and had that thing taken off their back. And from that time on, all that heaviness left her. When it went away, it just moved off her entire spirit. It was a spirit of darkness and evil. And it was the goat of Mindy's, the same thing that's on the Medal of Honor, the same thing that's built into the Capitol and the Mall and the White House, built in there. It's the same evil spirit. 